Hey, what's up everybody? Today, we're gonna be talking about something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about rejection. I wanna talk about it in the context of getting jobs, life in general, and a couple experiences that I've had. One of the ones I wanted to start off with was really my first failed game design interview. One of the many, many, many interviews where I got rejected and told, hey, no, this isn't gonna work, or whatever, or at least so I thought. This one, though, was a little bit different. And I wanna talk about it and then just talk a little bit more about the subject in general, because I think that people struggle a lot with fear of rejection and just rejection in general. People will not apply for things, not try to do things, just because they're afraid that well, they'll get rejected or that they just won't be good enough or that somebody just won't think of them as good enough. And of course, the reason that I think that people think like that is because I've been in that position myself a million times. I've been afraid of being rejected from jobs, girls, friends, people, all kinds of things, just about any kind of situation. I think it's pretty normal for humans, at least as far as I can tell. It feels normal to me, at least. So if it's not normal uh, and I'm weird, let me know, I guess, down in the comments below. Say, hey, you're weird and uh, nobody else is afraid, <laughs> afraid of rejection ever. But I want to just talk a little bit about, well, not letting that get you down, not letting that stop you. And again, a couple of experiences that I've had with it. So I wanted to just start with one of the first interviews that I had that just kind of failed. And it was a game design interview. This was before I was really big on programming. I kind of knew how to code. I could write a little bit of code. I say I knew how to code. I knew what coding was and I could write a little bit of code and make a tiny little thing happen really didn't understand what I was doing, but I could write a tiny bit of code. At the time, though, I applied for a game design position. It was actually at this company, which is why I was wearing the shirt. This old uh, game company, old buddy of mine used to run, and, um, well, buddy of mine now, not at the time. At the time, didn't know him. Applied for this job to be a game designer. It was essentially like a beginning level or intro, in entry level associate designer job, the kind of where you're just going in and entering in data or filling out areas of content, essentially. It, that was kind of the job that I was looking for. And I was really interested and really excited about it because it was for an MMORPG that was similar to one that I'd been obsessed with as a teenager and I guess young adult. That sounds about right. Yeah. So anyway, I'd been obsessed with EverQuest and this was going to be like a successor to it. So I was really excited at the idea of working in games and working in game design. It was before I really realized again that I wanted to be a game programmer. That came much, much later. So I applied for this job. They had openings online. I think that there was like a forum process. It was a long time ago. So I think they had like an open forums where you could go in and submit your application through email or something. And I did that and then flew down to Las Vegas for an event where they actually had the interviews. So I flew down there. Um, for the event and the interviews, kind of like a combination thing. So that's a interesting way, I guess, to get people to fly in for um, for interviews and not pay for it. Right? It worked though. I was interested enough that that I did exactly that. Went to the event, went to the interviews, and I thought it was going relatively well. I came really, really, really prepared. I had a bunch of designs of things that I thought would be interesting and fit kind of into the game from what I knew about it. I had examples built up, lots of documents, um, even a little sample gameplay system that I had built in code, like a, a very terrible one, but it was something that I built to kind of demonstrate and visualize what I was trying to explain and show as one of the designs. Anyway, we go th we're going through the process and they're asking me questions. And one of the questions that I remember failing on miserably and them actually bringing up and telling me, hey, you shouldn't say this again because it was a, a big mistake, <laughs> was when they asked me um, how much I wanted to make for that job. And at the time, I wasn't making a whole lot. I mean, I was a test engineer making whatever test engineers made. At the time. I think I was making like 30000 a year or something, 32000 a year, which at the time was, I mean... It, it was about the right going rate for what I was doing. And it was probably about the rate that designers were going in at. I didn't realize that at the time. But when they asked me what I would work for, I was like, I don't know, I'd work for just about anything. I'd almost work. I was like, I'd probably do the job for free if I could, if I if that was the only way to do it. And they're like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't say that. So they, they kind of rewound me and talked me back through and explained something that I just kind of want to explain to to you and everybody else 
which was that when I was saying that, I was basically saying that my time as a game designer has a value of zero, that I, I'm not actually providing any value to the company and probably a cost. If, you, if somebody says that they want to work for you for free, and I've learned this growing up and just getting older and going through things enough times, when somebody says that they want to work for you for free, it's very rare that it's going to be free. It's usually going to cost you a lot more work in training the person, getting them ready, and they're probably not going to be very productive and not get a lot done. Sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes people do free stuff and they do amazing, amazing work. But a lot of the time when people want to do things for free, they're um, just not, it's it's not nearly as good. So they, they saw that as like, hey, this has a value of zero. Not very exciting. You shouldn't say that. Aside from that, though, your interview was going great. So um, we're very interested and we're going to call you in a couple weeks. And I left that thing like all ecstatic. I was like, all right, this is awesome. I think I'm going to get this job, right? Go home, waited around a week. And I was like, oh, man, I still haven't heard anything yet. I like waited around another week. Still hadn't heard anything. Wait around another week. Nothing. Another week. Nothing. And I waited and waited for months and never, never heard anything. It really sucked. I was like all excited and I uh, just never, ever heard anything back. I did at one time email um, one of the guys that interviewed me. I sent one email out to one of the guys that interviewed me and said, hey, I just wanted to reach out because I hadn't heard back. And that was only after like a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks. But uh, let, let's, uh, let's, let's cut ahead a little bit. So I didn't get the job. Let's, let's just say that. I didn't get that job. Did not end up as a game designer, as you can probably tell from watching my channel about game programming. Ended up doing something different. What actually happened was many, many years later, well, a couple years later, I ended up getting a job at that same company doing game programming. So that's where this hoodie came from. I ended up going back, reapplying um, for a different position, a different department there a couple years later and got in. And what I found out, which kind of blew my mind and reminded me to stop being stupid when it comes to these things and stop being afraid to reach out and talk to people was that shortly after that interview that I'd had, um, at least one of the people, I think multiple of the people who had interviewed me left the company. They just weren't there anymore. So they said it was good. Everything seemed cool, but they were gone from the company. So that it was almost as if that interview had never happened. And I'm emailing people who had left the company. So nobody was getting the emails that I was sending. And I just had I done a little bit more, I guess, due diligence and research and just dug in and really kind of pushed for it and not just thought like, I guess I just got rejected, then I probably would have gotten into that position. But that hasn't always been the case with the rejections that I've had. Most of them weren't accidental rejections where somebody just left and I probably could have still gotten in. Most of the time, it was just because I was just not the right fit or underprepared or there was just somebody else that they wanted to hire instead. And I've gone through that a lot of times, more times than I can even count and remember. And I think that a lot of the time people think that other developers never get rejected when they're going out to interviews. But I mean, I can just sit back and think through interview after interview where they asked me some question or some other question where I just got lost or I wasn't prepared enough or sometimes I just didn't even sleep enough the night before and just totally bombed the interview and failed it. And I've sent out my resume to dozens of companies where I just never heard back or just got back a big fat no. Most of the time with resumes, though, you just don't get back any answer. Or then phone interviews where I just kind of got rejection emails shortly after. I remember one at, um, was that at Magic Leap? Not, not that long ago. Applied for a job there, went through a whole interview and just rejected on the phone interview. Because of, uh, I forget, it was, something, it was some math-related stuff and some C++ stuff that I was just rusty on. And again, not prepared for that position. Wasn't really ready for it. Wasn't sure I was interested enough in it and didn't prepare enough to get through there. And I just totally bombed it and got rejected. I mean, even if I had prepared, probably still would have got rejected on that one. On that topic of phone interviews, though, I did want to mention one time when I had a phone interview that I bombed. At least I, I felt like I kind of bombed it. I went through a couple stages of it and things were going okay. And then got to a part where I remember the question. It was about reversing a list. Uh, I, I think it was just reversing a list in C sharp. How would you reverse a list in C sharp? And I said that I would use dot reverse. And then he asked, well, could you just write an algorithm to do it? And I said, I'm sure I could and wrote up something that was not very efficient because it's just kind of like 
on the fly like oh wait i need to reverse this um and not thinking about it all i've been using dot reverse for so long it didn't even cross my mind what the best way to do it was so i just wrote an algorithm that wasn't efficient at all and it didn't go great and they're like oh well can you optimize this and i was like i probably could but i'd need to think about it for a while and i don't think i could do it live on this call which was obviously a big failure but i thought ah, i can maybe salvage this maybe i could reply back after so we went through finished up the call and i could tell i was like ah this isn't sounding too good like really failed this part that was apparently a kind of big part of the the test that they had and i thought well maybe i can salvage it just by getting back in contact with them and doing a bunch of research sending them a couple different solutions along with code samples of how i would do it and explain what i would do in the real world if i had a list that i needed to reverse and i needed to optimize it dot reverse for some reason wasn't fast enough what i would do is start researching some options and find a way to find the fastest most optimal solution instead of trying to figure out or remember it from memory find the fastest way to reverse the list instead and i sent him all of the details on that in a big long email about 20 minutes 30 minutes after the phone interview ended and i actually ended up getting that position which was kind of mind-blowing for me but i'd learned over the years that if you don't just keep trying and you don't just put in the effort show up you know give it your best effort then you're always going to get rejected if you don't go whatever apply for the job or talk to the girl or do whatever the thing is you're never going to get it to actually happen you've got to try you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to get over rejection you can't just sit there and let it like stew and let it be like the all-consuming thing if you only apply for one job and you get rejected from it and that's all you've done it can just overwhelm you if you've only talked to one girl and she rejects you and that was like your whole life which is based on this one girl or this one job or this one thing and it rejects you you're gonna feel devastated so don't do that <laughs> if, as soon as the rejection comes you, you don't get that position start applying for the next position start applying for the next position and the next one with the dating thing i would say don't do them all at the same time but with the jobs definitely do apply for multiple jobs at once don't just apply for one thing you might find that the jobs that you thought you were going to get rejected for and were even afraid to apply to come back and are the ones that you actually get into but all of the jobs that you don't apply to you're definitely not going to get into same with all of the things that you never try all of the girls you never talk to or whatever the thing is if you never actually give it an attempt and you just kind of pre-reject yourself and pre-make yourself fail you're just letting yourself down and really fighting against yourself i wasn't really sure how to wrap this up but i really just wanted to say that you got to make sure that you just don't let rejection or the fear of rejection get in your way. Don't let it stop you from doing the things that you want to do. Don't be so afraid to go apply for something or do whatever it is that you want to do and be afraid of it failing or rejection. We should talk about fear of failure later. We'll talk about that in a separate video. If you're interested in that, drop a comment below. Actually, no matter what, just drop a comment below and say hello because it really helps YouTube and all that. But I want to talk and I'm not afraid of being rejected on that. You could leave a bad comment if you have to. Um, but yeah, don't let the fear of rejection just get you down and don't let it stop you from doing things. It's the biggest thing that I've seen just knock people down and keep people from doing things to sit around, get absolutely nothing accomplished or sit by and just kind of like watch as life goes by not getting the things that they want to get done, done or not doing and going out and putting themselves out there to do something because they're just afraid that somebody's going to say something bad or somebody is not going to like it or somebody's going to say no. And to that, I just got to remind you that they don't matter. It does not matter if you get rejected by somebody or some company or whatever. You just don't need to interact with them again. You don't need to talk to them again. Move on to the next one and keep going. Or maybe come back later, a couple years later in a different department and try again with a new attempt. Anyway, I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. If you don't mind hitting the thumbs up button, I'd appreciate it. Again, drop a comment or hitting the share button and all that stuff is cool too. Also, check out my courses and other stuff down below in the description. And thanks again for watching. Appreciate it. Bye.